Hello everybody, welcome to another blog workshop. My name is Nikita Fuchs for Eternity from the wonderful Blog Factory. And today we're gonna go full call inception. That's right. After the last videos, we talked quite often about like calling contracts here and there. Today we're gonna check out how you can make your contract call another contract. That's a technique quite important actually in decentralized finance, also known as DeFi, of course. Uh, for example, when your contract, when your trading contract needs to transfer some tokens in another contract, and in that course, that contract could make another contract call and another contract call. These things are known as intercontract calls, and how that stuff works, we're gonna check out today. To make your contract call another one, you have to tell your contract a bit about your other contract. You do that by providing a so-called contract interface right above the code of your actual contract. It is there to tell your contract about the functions you want to be called in the other contract, their parameter types and their return data types. You don't provide any function logic as your main contract doesn't care about that. Watch out for the slightly different syntax when defining interfaces. Of course, the function in your other contract must be public, denominated as entry point. Also don't forget to mention whether that function is stateful, payable, both or none of it. However, watch out. When writing interfaces, always make sure that they correspond to the signature of the function in the other contract that you're trying to call. It means naming, parameter types, return data types. If you screw that up, then your intercontract call is most likely deemed to fail. And watch out, there's no way for the compiler to automatically check the correctness for you as it doesn't know anything about the contract that you are going to try to call. So keep an eye out. Now we tell a contract to call the other contract. Specifically, it can call any other contract that has at least one of the functions we define in our interface. As a parameter, we pass the address of our remote contract. The parameter type for remote contracts is not address though, but the name you gave the interface. The syntax for calling your remote's contract function then goes like this. Now make sure your remote contract is deployed. Grab its address, deploy your main contract and make it call your remote contract's function. But my call failed. Since the iris hard fork, Eternity provides you with a way to handle failing intercontract calls. Simply put, we wrap the remote contract call in a switch statement. But in case of remote contract calls, we need to handle two small syntactical extras. Provide a named argument called protected, set it to true, and deem the return type to be an option of the actual return type. And as you may recall from another video, when checking an option of some type with a switch statement, it can always resolve to either none or some data that you can further operate with. This allows us to check with Sophia's pattern matching whether the call succeeded or not. If none matches, the call failed. In the sum case, it succeeded and you can bind the return data to a variable named after your liking. Two last cool things to know. Once you passed an address for an external contract, you can retrieve it as an address inside your code like so. If you want to pass AE and or limit the gas amount you want to provide to your intercontract call, you can use these corresponding named arguments. One last very important thing to keep in mind though. As you might recall, in Sophia, call.caller always refers to the entity calling the contract. But if you send a transaction to contract A to then perform a call to contract B, then for contract B, call.caller will always resolve to contract A, 
not you who initially sent this transaction. This is really, really important to always keep in mind so you will not screw up your smart contract logic. But help! I'm stuck! Don't despair, just read the documentation. <laughs> if you still need some help, then of course check out the Eternity Forum. Tons of people there to help. And as always, I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more technical content regarding Eternity, then of course always hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell, feed your cat, clean up your room, the usual YouTube stuff. Lots of interesting things coming up in the future. So hope to see you again in the next video. Bye. Oh, fuck. <laughs>